And you are allowed to puncture the cans for the purpose of re recycling the scrap metal so that you're going to drain them and then you can't throw the cans away at this point. You have to send the cans for scrap metal recycling. So that's the requirement. Okay. <clears throat> now, somebody was asking about puncturing and the scrap metal recycling. So scenario number three can actually go with whether you're managing it as hazardous waste or as, as universal waste, either way. All right, now, if you are going to puncture them, it is permissible, right, as long as, I mentioned, you're going to recycle the cans. You can't then dispose of them, right? So also, don't laugh at me, but you can't take an ice pick, right? You have to use a standardized uh, device that meets certain states, uh, safety standards, in particular, we want to make sure that we don't have fugitive emissions and that they're safe for the operators to use as well. They have to completely contain those residues and emissions as well. Okay, so now, what happens when you use a puncturing device? Well, two things are going to happen. One is you, unless it's a P-listed aerosol can, if once you puncture it, then you definitely know that it is RECRA empty at that point. So at that point, it's RECRA empty, and you can send it for scrap metal recycling. Um, the contents that come out of it, usually a lot of these devices attach to the top of a 55-gallon drum, and then the material itself, we have, <laughs> Bob said, we can't use an ice pick that takes the fun out of it. I know, I know, I know what my students are like, I know. <laughs> so uh, the contents themselves, now you have to do hazardous waste ID on the contents. Let's stop right there. Don't let this happen. Let's say that you're puncturing, uh, you have cans and you're puncturing spray paint and you're collecting the paint. If somebody comes by with an aerosol can with a P-listed waste in it, yikes, because once that contents mixes with everything else, there's something called the mixture rule in the hazardous waste rules, and the mixture rule says when you, when you mix a listed hazardous waste with any other waste, it all becomes that listed hazardous waste. Oh my gosh, you just made all of this P-listed waste. It's, uh, it's very, it's liquid. It's expensive to get rid of. You have to make sure that that doesn't happen. And the way that you make sure that that doesn't happen is that if you decide to use puncturing devices, you want to train a couple of key people. You don't want everybody from your facility coming over and using it. They have to be trained properly so they know how to stay, stay safe and also so that we don't inadvertently mix things that shouldn't be mixed together. So you want to really keep a grip on that, right? Okay. So now the contents, we have to manage them under the regular hazardous waste rules, the contents out of the can. Now, if you are gathering those contents from a, a puncturing device, you could follow the satellite rules there because that's at or near the original point of generation which means if, if it is a hazardous waste, you're going to write the words hazardous waste on, on the container and an indication of what the hazard or hazards are. And you could take as long as you want to get to 55 gallons, assuming it's not acute, right? So you get to 55 gallons. When you're ready to start another container, because this one, you've reached the 55 gallon limit, now you're exceeding 55 gallons, because you're starting another drum, now you have to mark the date on it, and within three days, ship it off-site or send it to your central accumulation area. Right? Now we have the leftover cans, and take a look at my screen at 261.4 paragraph A, subparagraph 13. 
This is where the rules are telling you that if you have scrap metal, that's going for scrap metal recycling, it's not even a solid waste. And so if it's not a solid waste, it can't be a hazardous waste. I would say that part of this depends on what kind of volume are we talking about. Now, if you puncture them and you send them for scrap metal, that could help with your waste minimization. Uh, you know, if you have enough volume, that could actually make a difference with your waste minimization plans that you have to have. Um, it's entirely up to you if you want to use these rules or not. We're showing you some different options. Okay. Now, if you're going to uh, do puncturing, okay, we have to have written procedures for doing it safely. Of course, you have to maintain the puncturing device. <clears throat> you want to keep incompatibles away from each other. You don't want to form any poisonous green gas wafting through your facility there, right? And uh, basic waste management practices, uh, <clears throat> you have to keep a copy of the manufacturer's specs and instructions for using the device. Also, if there are spills or leaks, you have to have written procedures for handling that and also have a spill kit available for anybody where you're using this device here, okay? Okay, all right, fantastic, great questions, fantastic.